Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host, Brian. Today we're going to be doing a special selection. That's where one of you tell me exactly what I should be checking out. Today's special selection comes at us from Christopher. It says, oh brother, leave me out. So that's what we're going to be checking out today. Never heard of this band before. Uh, a lot of the bands... Okay, like, subscribe. I did not do that one on purpose. <laughs> a lot of the bands we check out, I, uh, I'm, I've at least heard the name of them, either in passing or... Uh, you know, maybe somebody suggested them in the comments. Maybe someone put up one of their songs in the Discord. I've at least heard the name, but Oh Brother? I don't even know what I'm in store for. I have no idea. I've never even heard the name before, so I'm excited. Let's get into this. Oh, they only have 1,000 subscribers, so this might be uh, a smaller band. All right, anyways, let's get into it. So we have a bit of an eerie sound. We have this recurring pedal tone before we come back up and do a little uh, breathe out, try out to breathe out. It's it seems now. Really digging into that eerie atmosphere. Very nice sparse melody over on the right side. Yeah, widen out the sound. We got some extra vocals, pianos added. evolving too. Some harmonies in the vocals. We got that low atmospheric drone in the back. Bit of a tempo change too, we've actually slowed it down a little bit to make the section feel heavier and weightier. And we took that background uh, drone and actually separated it, hit both the pans, the pan on both sides.
Yeah. Yeah, I dug that. That was good. So we have a single concept song. Uh, we take the first idea, we expand it out throughout the entire track, slowly add layers to it, create a uh, slow burn. We explore the singular idea across uh, you know, various different tempos and uh, textures, atmospheres, timbres, voices, uh, all sorts of stuff, even production, which I think is really interesting. Um, mm, I want to, we're going to touch on production first, <laughs> so I don't forget about it. Um, so the first two sections of the song, which would be our introduction sparse section, uh, and then the slightly larger section that came after that, they were both uh, had singular vocals. They might have been double tracked, but it was a very similar double track. There was no harmony put onto it. There was no delay to it. Um, but we have the single vocal track centered, and then we have atmospheric stuff happening around it. We have instruments to the left. We have instruments to the right. We have uh, drones that go on behind it. The drums are sort of centered with it. But when we come to the, the largest section, that final moment of the song, that third part, it feels like someone went right down the middle and split everything. That drone that was centered, like sort of behind, it got split. It was in both sides. It wasn't really centered anymore. Even the vocals, uh, the two harmonies were split. They were a little closer to the middle. It wasn't 100% panning. It was more of like maybe 60 or 70%. There's still some element of it in the middle. But honestly, the only thing in the middle still at that point was the drums. And I think it's a, it's interesting. I have no idea what the song is about. It says, leave me out. Um, we have this idea of, uh, you know, evolving melody lines and harmony lines, atmospheric lines, uh, slowly building up this song. We have constant layerings. We have layerings in the vocals even. And to split everything. Uh, you know, leaving parts away from other parts. It's uh, it's just done very well. Uh, I think leaving the drums centered and maybe some atmospheric work centered as well really helps the song sound songy. <laughs> uh, in the sense that uh, I don't think you would notice it if you weren't particularly listening for it. Whereas if the entire song was panned left or right, most people would realize that it sounds odd or sounds sparse. There's something missing. There's something that doesn't sound right about it. Um, I've never heard a song with no center channel to it, so I don't know what that would sound like. I'm kind of imagining, but I, I'd wager a lot of people would be like, hey, something's off here. But they left that there, and I think it really holds together some of the... Uh, expectations of what a song's supposed to sound like while still entertaining this idea of separating uh, a lot of the, the song into two sides leaving parts out from other parts um, so I think that's really cool I may be reading into that one it doesn't exactly line up with the phrase leave me out but it is a separation of ideas of uh, you know removing oneself from in a you know from an environment or an equation um, and, you know, putting this divide between two elements. So I think that's cool. Now, the song as a whole is very... I actually forgot about this. It starts out extremely uh, creepy, eerie, um, menacing in some senses. And it really didn't dawn on me until just now. I'm trying to remember most of the song. That final section still has some of those elements to it. However, to me anyways, it has a bit more uh, victoriousness to it. Triumph, maybe. Um, and it's this weird balance of unsettling but triumphant. And I think that's really interesting. Anyways, the song starts out with a very eeriness to it. The uh, musical lines that are being played are toying around with like a creepy atmosphere. The vocals come in. They're very breathy, very quiet, 
It's very personable, and he's singing to you in a kind of an odd way. It's a little little creepy the way he's doing that. And, the, you know, it creates an instant atmosphere from the first note. And then slowly we start seeing some more layers on it. We get the piano coming in with just one note, and then two notes, and then a little run, and then a melody line. And I love this slow evolution of the piano part. Um, and then I think it was guitars or something, whatever the first instruments were, they got pulled out of the mix. We got this really cool, wide, deep, uh, compressed bass tone drone that was centered to me. It felt behind me. Um, it was centered, but not in front of me. Uh, and then we got some violin stuff. And then this is where the song really starts to open up and the layers are coming in fast at this point. And I wish I could focus on each individual layer, but uh, like I said, they're coming in fast. There's a lot of stuff going on. But the point is that the song at this point was widening out. It was becoming much larger than it was. And it uh, it's really taking on this larger-than-life identity. Uh, whatever the issue is that this person wants to be left out of, you know, it's it's becoming too difficult to possibly speak about quietly and civilized. It needs to be, you know, escalated. Uh, their intent to be left out needs to be heard, and it isn't. Um, so we keep getting all these escalating elements that add to the tension, they add to the atmosphere, they add to the complexity of it. I really wish I could pull up some lyrics here. <laughs> but being that it's a smaller group, possibly. Oh, nope. <laughs> They got him. Uh, Genius has it. Um, it's very metaphorical, though. Dang, not something I'm going to be able to unwrap on the fly, I don't think. It definitely seems to be about being used. by someone else. And possibly not knowing how to get out of the situation. I feel like I'm stretching some of these lyrics though to get that. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think I'm going to include lyrics just because I, I might be off there. So I think that might actually end this um, analysis then just because, I mean, it pretty much touches on everything. It's uh, it's only four minutes long. It is a single idea, beautiful atmosphere, um, layering, and then that production split at the end. I think that's everything that really stood out to me. So, yeah. Excellent stuff, though. I really enjoyed this. So, this is where you guys come in, though. Hit me up with any comments, anything that uh, you might have picked up on. That I Oh, no, 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 no. Um, uh, dynamics. I need to talk about dynamics real quick because this is something that I bring up often in other bands that just don't utilize dynamics too well. Uh, that they, you know, create, uh, quiet sections, loud sections, but that the volume actually isn't moving at all. And here it is just done so masterfully. I love the way that they use dynamics in all sorts of ways to emphasize some of the elements of the song. So we have... Obviously, volume dynamics are, you know, I kind of introduced this section by talking about that. But, uh, you know, 100% the song comes in 
and it is low volume and it slowly builds over time. However, there is that one explosive section. I think it's um, what actually leads into that final moment of the song. Uh, when we, we bring it back down just a little bit, uh, I don't remember what particularly was there. Vocals, uh, I think the piano would have been there at the time. Maybe a guitar, I don't remember. Um, and then we, we come down, you know, we've brought it down a little bit before hitting our highest point. And I've mentioned in the past that if you want your loud parts to feel loud, you put them up against quieter parts. And I think this was genius because they gave us four bars maybe of bringing the volume down a little bit. So instead of going from a five to a 10, which is still a pretty big leap, we actually brought it down to like a three or a four and then hit the 10. So it kind of gave us a bit of a palate cleanser to make that louder section even more impactful than it already would have been. Um, it's like layering of layering of the contrasts. Really genius part of the song. Um, but then we also have dynamic width, uh, which is just how wide the song sounds. And I think it's really interesting that the beginning of the song it's, it's sparse. I mean, it's it's a vocal and guitars, right? But what's interesting is that it's not just sparse, it's weighted. We have guitars on our left side, we have vocal center panned, and nothing right, I think, until the piano comes in. Um, and I don't think this is the first time they do this. I think in the second section, when we hit just a slightly larger volume, uh, there's also a part in there where we have the center panned drone and then the piano on the right and nothing really on the left yet until something else comes in. I don't remember. Um, but it's this idea of, uh, you know, dynamic weight, uh, dynamic balance, and allowing the listener to sort of feel off balanced in some of these sections, which compounds well with the unsettling aspects of the song. They're allowing the listener to be off balanced in the atmosphere, in the mix. Um, and I think it's just it's just done so well. A lot of this is uh, sort of production elements to it, ensuring that the volume levels are actually where the song dynamics are, should be at. Uh, and it's, you know, the balancing, the, where the panning needs to be at. But I think that's my big takeaway here is, yes, the composition is done very well. Uh, I love the way that everything lines up, especially there in the final section with the choir and the dual vocals and the keyboard and the, the strings uh, and some of the electronic stuff and how everything just comes together to create this oppressive, uh, you know, eerie section of the song. And I was looking, uh, you know, at the lyrics, I still don't know what they are, but the final section of the song is just two ideas repeated, leave me out, I just don't know what to do. And just keep going back and forth between these two statements. And I love how it almost makes those two statements into the oppressive element. What's, what's you know really weighing heavy on this person. That is the heaviest part of the music. They continue to say it over and over and again. And we continue to see more layers of music uh, added to this section. Um, and the width and the impact, the weight... Uh, you know, the heaviness of the section continues to grow and grow and grow, it becomes more dynamic over time while he's repeating these statements that he doesn't know what to do, so just leave me be, kind of. And uh, yeah, it's it's a powerful ending moment. I, I think it will be more Im impactful. Sorry. When I figure out what these lyrics mean, hopefully someone can give me some comments on that. It really isn't much. It's four stanzas and then the repeated section. Um, and actually two of the stanza, it looks like there's a chorus in here. They're repeated. So two verses, a chorus, and an outro that's just two sentences repeated. Um, but it's, it's going over my head. I've mentioned before that poetic analysis is not my strongest suit. <laughs> I need a little bit more time. Uh, to, to analyze what's going on with poetry, but yeah, I, uh, I love this. I don't know how it has so few subscribers. Uh, we're going to change that right now though. Click. That's one more subscriber. I'm going to have to listen to more of this stuff. 
uh, especially since it looks like we've got two album, well, one album, and some old stuff from MySpace. What? Yeah, I gotta, I gotta dig into this though. There's an album here, and I have to listen to it, <laughs> especially if a lot of it is like this. Um, yeah, I'm excited. So, uh, Christopher, thank you for tossing this my way. I greatly enjoyed this. I hope I helped you understand a little bit more about the song. Uh, helped you appreciate a little bit more. Uh, comments, uh, all sorts of comments. I'll take. If you just want to put one word like yay or first, uh, I suppose that's fine too. Helps with the algorithm. However, I do enjoy conversation. If there's anything that you noticed in here that maybe I didn't talk about, anything that stood out to you, anything that you particularly enjoyed, go ahead and post those kind of comments down there. If you understand what's going on in the lyrics, definitely, uh, I'm, I'm down for learning about that because I really want to see if there's some themes in the lyrics that can be applied to what's going on in the music. Uh, above the comment section is a description box, and in there, you'll find a link tree link. It'll take you to a menu with buttons, <laughs> buttons that'll take you to all sorts of stuff related to the channel, Discord, Twitter, Patreon, email, special selections, all sorts of stuff. It's all in there. Uh, above that, of course, like, subscribe, and ring the bell. Uh, I'll be back tomorrow, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 10 p.m. UTC. We have one more Math Rock song this week and then we'll be looking at a creator's request where a band or artist emails me to look at their music all right until next time remember to be critical but not cynical of the music you listen to and have a fantastic morning afternoon or evening whenever you choose to watch my videos mm -hmm.